Normally, this time would be devoted to your second commercial. However, I would like to use it now to tell you just a bit about the California Academy of Sciences, the institution which produces science in action. The Academy is one of the oldest and most distinguished scientific organizations in the United States. And we're quite proud of that fact. The Academy is dedicated to scientific research and public education in science. Now, public education takes several forms. Here, Dr. Robert C. Miller, Academy director and noted marine biologist, conducts a group of young people on an outing to study plant and animal life at the ocean's edge. Later, through Science in Action, they shared their experiences with thousands of others. The mysterious ways of a small crab or the magic of the distant planets may be equally fascinating. When it was found impossible to procure a planetarium projector from the Zeiss Company, our academy staff proceeded to design the only major planetarium that has ever been completely constructed within the United States. Here we are on the roof of the planetarium building, but the instruments we see have nothing to do with the stars. As a service to the United States Weather Bureau, academy staff members keep regular records of various phases of the weather. The Natural History and Science Museums and the Steinhardt Aquarium continue the public education program in still another way. For example, more than a million and a half visitors come to Steinhardt Aquarium every year to view the reptiles, fish, and marine animals which have been gathered from every part of the world. Here is a very rare cannibalistic South American horned frog. And of course, washing down the back of green and hawksbill turtles and scrubbing the back as well is quite important in preparing them for display. The long established reputation of the Academy has earned us the cooperation of organizations in all fields of science. Here a great hospital permitted us to film the administration of Mistogen, an unprecedented effort to keep alive a baby unable to breathe. Later this became a part of one of the medical shows which form an important portion of any science in action series. Industry has been quite generous in sending us top scientists to tell the story of how science is applied to the products and services that we use every day. Now this span extends from the comparatively new and dramatic synthetics industry to the old and still vitally important railroad business. Each series of Science in Action is balanced to include subjects appealing to every taste. The film that you are viewing covers only one topic in one field. The broad overall scope of the entire program appeals to all interests in science and to all ages. Incidentally, there is one thing I'd like to mention, and that is the fact that the Animal of the Week feature provides an excellent bridge for the middle commercial. Well, that gives us a very good idea of the sort of thing that you might hear if you were sitting on one of these listening devices in a submarine. Well, now, uh, <coughs> To uh, go into this next point, which is the selection of personnel for submarine work, which I know is a very, very important thing. We have asked to come to the laboratory for the crew of the submarine training facility at Mare Island. So perhaps, uh, Admiral, you'd give us an idea as to what's involved now in um, oh, selection of people, their physical condition, lungs, ears, um, chest, uh, vision, teeth, and all that sort of thing. Well, I'm very happy to see that we have these lads here from Mare Island. It gives our audience a chance to see just what submarine sailors look like. Now, all of these lads have gone through a very extensive training at the submarine base at, Nar at, Mar Isle, at uh, New London. The last two lads over there have just come out and they're all full of vim and vigor and ready to go to sea. All fine. The two chiefs have been in submarines for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. As you know, they're, <coughs> they're selected as being perfect physical specimens. They have to have good heart, good lungs. They have to have good eyes, good night uh, adaptation. Mm -hmm. And they also have to have good teeth in order to grasp the mouthpiece of a, of a Momsen lung. Say, we have, a, we have a, uh, a cutaway section here of a Momsen lung. First of all, here's the mouthpiece that is put into the mouth. And then here is the inside container. Right here is where the oxygen is put into the unit. And the oxygen comes down here, of course. And this is a soda lime cylinder, which helps in the, uh, in the overall circulation of the breath, or the, uh, the breathing into this, and taking the oxygen out of it. I see one of the boys has one on there now. Perhaps we can uh, just look over there and see uh, what it would be like if he were using this piece of equipment. These lungs are used in training so that they may be ready to escape from a sunken submarine if necessary. Mm -hmm. They're first given a series of dives from 18 feet, coming up with a lung. And then they come up from 50 feet, 
and finally to come up from 100 feet. That, uh, that diving tower in which they do this work is certainly something that's, uh, that's uh, most uh, amazing. Uh, in other words, a man that couldn't uh, make this ascent from 100 feet up to the surface, he wouldn't be suitable for submarine work, would he? That's correct. <laughs> in addition to all these qualifications, a submarine sailor has to be able to get along with his shipmates. They have to have a very even disposition, even temperament. They have to be uh, thoroughly dependable. They have to be men that you can't stampede under any circumstances. Well, since the life of each man on board is in the hands of his uh, fellow sailor, of course, that becomes vitally important. Uh, uh, of course, there are a lot of other things that fit into this thing that we don't have time to go into right at the moment, but since we've seen some of the components now of uh, of a submarine, both the equipment and personnel. Suppose we go now and see just what a submarine would be like under action. Well, I'd like to say that those, uh, those uh, physical qualifications and those temperaments we've described 